This is my 2001 Jaguar 2.5 V6 petrol manual. Um, I'm in the middle of changing the front wishbones because of an MOT fail. It has taken me over four days, nearly 20 hours to do one. And the reason for that is everything's seized, nothing wants to undo and nothing wants to go back on. But I've finally managed to do side one, so I'm hoping that side two is only going to take me about four hours. It should be quite straightforward. It should be take the wheel off, take the brake caliper off, take the brake disc off, uh, undo the three bolts that hold the wishbone on, remove the wishbone, put it back. Removing the wishbone is a feat of Hercules. Quick recap for putting it back together. Put this part in first, bolt goes up um, and the body of it will be over here where my hand is. Put the nut on, do it up loosely, then rotate this so that this is then located, but don't put the bolt in. Then put the pinion in um, and what you need is a great big lever, push that down hard, then using your strength push it all into place and then you probably have to bang that in with a mallet. Then using a lever, a screwdriver, lever this into position, put the bolt in, hammer the bolt in and then do it up. And uh, then breathe a sigh of relief. After that, put the disc and the caliper back on. I found this was a real fight. These two bolts at the back here are really hard to find in the dark, so the best thing is to put a screwdriver through one pair of holes to locate it. Put the, um, either the bottom or the top one in, whichever suits you. Do that up a bit loose, then do the other one up. And then you're there. And then the last thing to do is just put the plastic panel back in. I've had to take out the speed fastener because that's gone rotten and I shall bind this all together with a cable tie. Um, and then the wheel can go back in and I never have to look at this ever again. The MOT advisory is for worn and split bushes and the bushes actually cost more than the complete assembly. I've sent off and I've bought both sides for £52 off of eBay which is worryingly cheap but if I get two years out of them that will be fine. The car is now 20 years old and I don't think we need to go to premium parts for this kind of work. First thing I would do is make sure they are the ones that are the same as on the car. I'm jacking the car up on the chassis rail with a two-ton jack with a little piece of wood to protect the metal and I've just done, done the nuts. I've used the Jaguar wrench that comes with the car which is guaranteed not to damage these very soft covers. If you use an ordinary socket it does tend to damage them and you can see these have been mangled a bit here. They're really annoying and you have to cut them off if they split. This is the new part and it's marked up Ford Jaguar. It's also marked up left hand and we can see here where it's located. I need to undo the bolt that runs through this. I need to undo the bolt that runs through that bush. And I need to undo what holds it down at the bottom. In order to get to the one that's hidden down here, I'm gonna to have to take this little plastic plate off. That's just held on with one screw there and one screw there which have obviously never been taken off and will probably self-destruct. I've managed to undo the top one, but the bottom one, that's just completely seized and it's mullered. So I'm just going to drill the head off. Well, yesterday it got rained off. And in fact, you can see the specks of rain that has come up as rust on the disc. So I'm back to it today and I need to loosen everything off to make sure that I can get it off. Now, this one here is a captive nut, so I need to attack that from the other side. This one has got a nut on the underside. And then this one has got a Torx head fitting uh, and a nut. So I need to get the correct tools for that. 
So first snag, this is a 15mm socket and it comes right on to this air conditioning pipe. I'm going to need to work out how I can get hold of this without damaging this pipe. I've got a longer, thinner socket and an extension bar, an adapter and a T-bar, breaker bar and a long piece of tube and even with that giving that full beans there is no movement in that that does not want to go anywhere so I'm going to have to get the kitchen caramelizer out and heat that up to try and loosen it off so that's our kitchen caramelizer um, this has the advantage giving a very small very hot flame what I've also done is I've rubbed a big blob of copper ease into the threads in the hope that as I heat it up it draws the copper inside and helps it to ease up. This does sometimes work, but not all the time. Right, this has turned out to be a right pig, but I have actually slowly managed to make it move. What I've done is I've heated this head of the bolt up to free it from the bracket, and then I've heated this bolt almost to orange and then I put a 15 mil socket spanner on it and using my BMW front fork stanchion used it to ease it off. And I can now actually move it with my own strength. What I was really worried about was rounding this head off because if the head came off, there's no way I'm gonna get that all apart without actually destroying it all. But now I can actually just pull that and I put a piece of tape on this end to show me that it's actually going round. You can just see it moving now. Now it's seizing up again, so I'm going to have to heat it up again um, so I can get it off. So this is now free of the nut, so it's just hanging in the bracket now. And I'm going to leave it like that while I try to undo the other fixings. So the next one I'm going to do is the underside of this. And I'll probably end up again heating that up. This one's proved to be a lot easier to undo. I've heated that nut up, so I've got an 18mm socket. We like these 18mm fittings. And a big old torque wrench, and that's just undoing relatively easy. So I needed a TX55, which I didn't have, so I've gone to Halfords and bought one for the grand price of eight quid. And uh, this is from their advanced range, which are the ones in the locked cabinets so you can't steal them and hopefully I'm going to be able to use this to undo this really stiff Torx fitting and then basically you're using that to stop it rotating and undoing it from the other side so again I'm going to get the flame on there and burn all the rust off and try and loosen that up before we start trying to do that this bolt really does not want to come out it's really seized and I don't want to hammer the end till it's pained over so I'm soaking it with WD-40 uh, while I go off to having a cup of tea. Um, you have to be careful with WD-40 because it is like petrol and it will burn with a flame. And I don't want to melt the rubbers on the shaft drive. So the nut came off quite easily. Had a last minute panic there where it wouldn't fit in but it's purely because the fitting is so corroded. So I've put it in with the old two pound application stick. Right, let's see if we can actually undo it. Even with the T-bar and this massive extension arm, which is the stanchion from a Yamaha RD200, I can't get any movement in this at all. That is absolutely solid. I'm just going to try heating it again, get it hotter and hotter. I am really struggling now. I cannot undo this pinch bolt. I've taken off the brake disc and the caliper and the calipers hang in there on a piece of wire and I've put the nut back on the end of the bolt so that I can use it to hammer it through. I've tried turning it with the Torx bit and that's having none of it. So I'm going to have to just keep trying to heat it up, cool it down, heat it up. While we're there that is why the thing has failed. There is a split in this rubber just here, look. And that's what needs to be replaced. 
Uh, what a pain in the ass! all for this little bit of rubber. I finally got it to move. What I did was I heated it up both sides and then I hit this as hard as I could, making sure that the nut and the bolt were flush so they didn't get damaged. On the other side, I used this to just keep wiggling it until it actually moves. And now it's moving. And keep putting WD-40 in there until it's loose and then hopefully I can then just strike it through. Give that a good clean up with a wire brush before that goes back in. I tried using a crowbar to get the pin out and that's turned out to be a dead loss. And so I've been using a old Sykes Pickavant driving tool. This is what we used to use to take the um, track rod ends off and hammering it into there. And that's got quite a long way in. But that still does not want to come out. So I think I'm going to have to undo the other end now. So I'm just taking out this front bush bolt um, by undoing it. The air conditioning pipe has got enough flex in it that you can just wedge it up out the way, fortunately. Because you can't get at the bracket to undo it. And that looks like it doesn't want to go anymore. So I now hopefully can just strike that out. Well, I finally got that bolt out, and when that actually released, that came out really violently. So you might bear that in mind, that that's quite a powerful reaction. And I was lucky I didn't get hit, actually. Now I've got to get the one over the back there. That's going to be the more difficult one. So I've released this now by knocking down on the uh, prime fork. That's now out. Day three. I'm still trying to get this bolt out. There's a number of ways you can do it. You could cut the bolt off, but I haven't got another bolt and they're probably really hard to source. You could probably cut through that, but that looks really strong. And what I'm trying to do is actually deform this rubber bearing enough to pull it over so I can actually just pull this off. At the same time, it will be deforming this bracket in which case I'll probably have to put a washer in when I put it back together. One of the main problems is though, the track rod arm is in the way from whatever movement you're trying to get out of this, it's in the way and I am not taking the track rod off. So I'm really nearly there now. And in fact in there, you can just see the threads at the end of the bolt and I've just got that mount to get it out now using four spanners taped together a smaller spanner that goes on top of my fulcrum I managed to lever this up to this point here and then I used my big hammer and the driver to actually drive that right out so that is now loose um, congratulations Jaguar on the, wor the worst designs I've ever seen all for the sake of a computerized assembly line I bent this bracket in order to get the thing out, so just do a few judicious taps, otherwise it's not going to go back together. And also it's worthwhile doing a couple of judicious taps on that bracket before you try to put it back together, because that'll be pinched tight, and that'll just make it so much easier, hopefully, to put it back in. I've just driven a bolster into this pinch clamp, just to make sure that the new one will go in easy. I don't want to be having to fight that in as well as everything else. I finally got it back together. I'm on day four now, but that's because it keeps raining. So the way to do it is locate this back rubber mount, put the pin in upside down and just do it up loosely. Rotate this round and locate this part here, the forward bush. Now I had to hammer the bracket to open it enough for it to slide in there and then I got a very very long metal bar which is this long so that I could push the whole assembly downwards and because it's on rubber mounts it will then deflect downwards and then I could then move all this around 
to get this in line with the pinion on the end of this. Now the main problem is you need a lot of strength to do this so I found a bottle jack and I rested this on the bottle jack and I got it in position and then I hammered the assembly so it suddenly clicked in and then I let it drop under its own weight then you can put the connecting bolt through and if it's in the right place it just goes straight through. I haven't bothered putting that little metal shield back on. Um, the Mondeos don't have them so I couldn't see what was the point of putting it on. It was all mangled up anyway when I got it back on. Um, and then you go around and you do up everything tight and that's it back on. I think um, from a point of view of difficulty this is 10 out of 10. This is the worst job I've ever done on this car and I've done a lot of jobs on this car. This was much worse than changing the rear springs. Everything's difficult, everything's seized, nothing wants to come out, it's all under tension. You're forever fannying about moving the position of the steering, which you have to start the engine to do that because they obviously it's power steering and you can't move it by hand. Uh, so now all I need to do, put the brake caliper and the brake disc back on and put the wheel back on and that's this side done. Hopefully the other side I can knock that off in about four hours because I now know how to do it.